You're watching Cycle Talk, Australia's motorcycle show. From sports bikes to motocross to cruisers, we love them all. We ride them, thrash them, test them, and sometimes we even crash them. In this episode, we get out onto some of Australia's best roads riding Yamaha's Tracer 700, Kawasaki's Versus 650, and the Honda CB500X. We also test Yamaha's new Kodiak ATV, but first, here's the news. BMW Australia is hosting its first GS Trophy qualifier event at Lima East, Victoria, at the end of October, where the top three riders will get the chance to take part in the GS Trophy in Mongolia next year. The top two female riders, if they place outside the top three, will receive the opportunity to compete in the International GS Trophy female team and will be sent to South Africa for the female qualifier event. To create the most spectacular and challenging international GS trophy, BMW Motorrad is scouting in a breathtaking country located between Russia and China. But it's not only about riding, it's about experiencing this country with all its mythical beauty, the history, the culture, and the people. The GS trophy isn't a race, it's an endurance challenge which tests your team spirit, fitness, tenacity, and riding capability over a series of tests. Set up a mind-blowing route demanding the highest riding skills and boundless team spirit. Technical, navigation, physical fitness, parallel log riding, hill climbs, descents, water crossings, braking, breaking down hills, sand passage, and others. So if you're a GS owner who pushes it to the limit, the GS trophy may be your ultimate test. Get ready for the ultimate off-road adventure event and check out gstrophy.com. More info at bmwsafari.com. Ducati is bringing the learner-approved Monster 659 back into the country from October. The bike is based off the Monster 797 and is being produced exclusively for the Australian and New Zealand learner markets where engine capacity must be under 660cc. Caddy Australia CEO Warren Lee said the 797 is proving to be a popular model with younger, female and less experienced riders. Cycle Talk had a Monster 659 project bike back in 2014, and we're pleased to see the model back in the lineup. Thousands of Harley Davidson enthusiasts are expected to gather in Wollongong for Harley Days, October 27 to 29. It's the largest celebration of HD culture, and there's heaps going on. Here's a video from last year's event. What I'm loving best about Harley Days is just to see the cross-reference of people. Nothing better than seeing our loyal hoggies here. You know, we have the best customers in the world, but it's also great to see other people from other brands who enjoy motorcycles, seeing everything that Harley Davidson is. The smiles on people's faces, you know, from the little kids that could jump on those bikes to the big kids that jump on those bikes is nothing better. So on offer this weekend, there's lots, so much to see. We've got all of our MI17 motorcycles, of course, lots of music, uh, just so much happening here. Now John Stevens will be headlining Saturday night and there's the Thunder Run on Sunday. Plenty of custom bikes, show and shine, dyno drag racing, stuff for dudes, stuff for dolls and a huge fun zone for the kids. So on 
Sunday is our Thunder Run and this is a traditional core part of every event that we do and uh, it's something that our members love, it's something that the public cherish as well. It was just amazing to see how many bikes from all over the country, all the different states, all the different chapters. It's awesome, I believe there's about three odd thousand bikes. It was a very nice one, a little bit of freeway, a little bit of a city and lots of people waving at us. It seems to be a very friendly town. It's been a cracker and um, look forward to uh, many more of them. Uh, certainly have my participation and support and good on you guys. One more time, keep it coming, eh? Ticketing is available through AustralianHarleyDays.com.au Over a 1,000 participants are expected for Sydney's Pink Ribbon Motorcycle Ride on October 15. It's a charity event now in its 17th year which raises money for research and equipment to fight breast cancer. If you come along to the ride, expect to see some very bright outfits as many riders get into the spirit of the event by playing dress-ups. Registration for the event costs $20 at pinkribbonride.com. This year's ride raffle has a first prize of a five-night family stay at the Ridges Hotel and Resort of your choice in Australia or New Zealand, valued at $1,810. The Pink Ribbon Ride is part of Motorcycle Awareness Month run by the Motorcycle Council of New South Wales, and you meet at the Club Marconi car park in Bosley Park from 9am where the best dressed bikes and outfits will be selected. The ride commences at 10 headed for Springwood Sports Club and back with the prize winners being announced at 2pm. Check out their website for a video as well. Download the digital only October 2017 issue of Cycle Talk now featuring Honda's all new CBR 1000RR Fireblade sports bike and Triumph's eclectic Bonneville Bobber Custom. We explain suspension in easy to understand terms and there's heaps of news, views and opinion. This free digital issue is available to download via our iPhone or iPad app or go to cycletalk.com.au to read it online or download the PDF version. Get it today. Coming up is Yamaha's Kodiak ATV and three bikes on tour. Every hole shot. Every corner. Every obstacle there to slow you down is another chance to get faster when you've got a legacy of world champions to live up to. Every second counts. This bike test is brought to you by Spitty on track. Work hard, ride easy. That's Yamaha's slogan for the new Kodiak 450. This is the new mid-size 450cc work quad from Yamaha. The Kodiak 450 replaces the Grizzly 450, but you can still get a Grizzly in the 700 as well as a Kodiak in the 700cc range. Some of the key features of the new Kodiak 450 is better ergonomics and a refined Ultramatic transmission. Now things the rider will really appreciate, especially with a big long hard day on the land, are things like the longer travel suspension to soak up the bumps better, it's got the electronic power steering, it's got longer A-arms and a wider track for better stability, but it's still nimble enough to get through the tight areas. One of the key features of the Ultramatic transmission is the engine braking. Now a lot of CVT style transmissions suffer from a lack of engine braking, which means coming down uh, Really steep hills can be a bit of potluck. Not so with the Yamaha. Now, this Kodiak 450 has been refined and, and it gives lots of engine braking and this is done through the one-way Sprag clutch. Now, we touched on ergonomics before. Now, what Yamaha's engineers have done is given the rider more room. And they've done this by raising the handlebar height and also lifting the gear stick height. So, no more bang knees and uh, no more tired shoulders. Now it's got a pretty good payload too, it can take 40 kilos on the front rack, 80 on the rear and it can tow 600 kilos. A couple of features I really like, 
from a, an engineering sort of standpoint was it's got lots of underbody protection, but if you want to change the oil in the, the engine or the front transmission, the rear transmission, you don't need to pull any of that off. You've got access to all those sump plugs. And also, getting to uh, change the air filter, a lot of the time you'd be riding one of these things in dusty climate, and the air filter is dead easy, no tools. And I'm just gonna try it right now. Look at that, that's how long it takes to get to the air filter. There's loads of accessories you can get for the Kodiak 450, depending on what you want to do. Now, if you're a farmer, you can get bags for the front and rear, whether it be hard luggage or soft luggage. If you're a hunter, a gun rack can be bolted to the front or rear. Uh, you can also get risers for the rear, so you can put bales of hay so they can be strapped down. Winch, massive big screen, cold climates, you can get heated hand grips and you can even get a heated seat. And with the winch, it's a plug and play. It's all pre-wired. You've just got to bolt it on and connect the plug. Now this is no sports ATV, of course. It's a work ATV. And for a work ATV, it does a fantastic job. Now, things I really liked about it was the torque of the engine, the fuel-injected engine. It's, it's no outright powerhouse. It doesn't need to be, because that's not how it's going to be used. I like the stability of it. I like the fact that they've widened the track that just that little bit and it seems to have made a difference. The, the usability of it overall, the ergonomics, the higher bars, the, uh, the, the gear lever there, it just gives you plenty of room. They've even increased the, the area there where your feet are. Great. The engine braking is a real high point of this vehicle with the Ultramatic uh, transmission and the electronic power steering. A lot of ATVs can beat you up when you're riding them in really rough terrain. This does not do that. You really don't even notice the electronic power steering working and um, it's just done, I think they've done a really good job and uh, yeah, all power to them. We're at the Circuit Algarve, Port of Mayo. Uh, we're at the Avon tyre test for the new Spirit ST tyre. Uh, we've got 16 motorcycles here and 15 journalists here, and we get a chance to try this new uh, Spirit ST tyre out. It's not really a track tyre, but I'm sure the journalists will be very impressed with it. We've been on the road yesterday. We found a nice little road that went all around up in the mountains and everywhere else like that and today it's on the circuit. This is our latest uh, Hypersport Touring tyre, the Spirit ST. This tyre has been designed for a huge selection of bikes from your lightweight sport touring bikes to your very heavyweight sport touring bikes. And the focus of this tyre really was to design a tyre that gave the ultimate grip in wet and dry weather, particularly focusing on wet performance. And we've got the latest technology in our compounds with very, very highly loaded with silica to deliver that ultimate wet performance. For a sports touring tyre, I've got to say, really good. Avon have come in with something as good than everything else. On the smaller capacity bikes, the Triumph 675s and stuff, they were brilliant. Bearing in mind we're on a track and, you know, they're meant to do 10,000 miles, and we had no problems. So, really, really good. I'm a very patriotic person, the tyres are made down in Melksham, it's a, a small knit group of people that are very much passionate about what they do uh, and they make a product that is a worldwide product, it's as good as anything out there and it's lovely to see a small community, a small group of people working so hard and coming up with such a great product. After the break, the boys are putting three Lambs bikes to the test on a big tour. Cycle Talk wants to get more people riding motorcycles more often. Since 1999, we have been encouraging people to become riders and for riders to wear out their tyres. Because using a motorcycle is more fun than just owning one. 
We do this because we love bikes, we love riding and we want more people to ride with. Join us. Cycle Talk is brought to you by motorcyclists just like you who help us make this TV show, magazines and website by supporting us with whatever they can afford from just a dollar or so a month. There are rewards for anyone who supports Cycle Talk, including early access to the TV show the week before it goes to air on telly and lots more. Please check out cycletalk.com.au slash support for various ways to support Cycle Talk and help us make the motorcycle stories you want to read and watch. This feature brought to you by Avon Tyres. Day two of our Lambs Bike Tour of New South Wales started at the Ralston Hotel and then we headed off towards Ilford and then onto the twisty road that takes you to Safala. Safala Road starts out as beautiful countryside and farming areas and as you get closer to Safala it starts to tighten up and there's some real nice twists and turns on the way down into Safala itself. Just be a little careful, some of them tighten up on you. The three bikes on the trip included a Honda CB500X, a Kawasaki Versus 650 and this bike, a Yamaha Tracer 700. At Safala, take the right turn to Hill End. It's a beautiful historic little town, but we didn't quite make it that far on this trip. The road here has only been sealed in the last few years, and it's a twisting, tight, scenic road that you'll have a lot of fun on. Just be a little bit careful of the Orly Armco and a few drop-offs. We took the turn off to Turandale, another nice road that takes you down into Bathurst. From Bathurst we managed to avoid the highway by heading a little bit south to O'Connell, then across to Taranā, and then into Lithgow, and then up the Bells Liner Road and then taking the turn off to Wiseman's Ferry for the night. So this is day three of our uh, Lambs Adventure Bike Test. Now yesterday, morning of day two, we, uh, we left Ralston and we stayed at the Ralston Hotel, they really looked after us, and uh, we speared off down through uh, Safala towards Hill End, Bathurst, Taranā some great roads. The bikes, we've been doing a few Ks and a lot of hours in the saddle because we've been doing lots of photos for the uh, and, uh, and video and so on. And uh, the bikes have really impressed. They're quite comfortable. They mightn't have the, the top end of the big adventure bikes, but oh, geez, I'll tell you what, they're very, very underrated motorcycles by the general public. You should check these things out. So from there, we went Bells on a Road uh, via Lithgow and we've ended up at uh, Wiseman's Ferry last night. And the good thing about this, you stay in pubs, the budget accommodation, always pretty good food. And uh, today, St Albans, back towards uh, Wollombi and back home. To get to St Albans, you've got to cross the ferry and take the tight winding country road into the historic picturesque little town. There, the Settlers Arms Hotel can serve you a drink or a lovely coffee before you hit the dirt as you head north towards Wollombi. None of the machines on this ride are truly adventure bikes, but they all have longer than average suspension travel and riding positions which suit a gravel road, and we're all good fun to ride on a loose surface. Their standard tyres aren't designed for dirt either, so you do need to be careful. But the CB500X, Versys and Tracer are all more at home on an unsealed road than their sportier cousins. North out of St Albans is the Wallumby Road, which is unsealed until it joins the Great Northern Road, where you're on another fantastic piece of bitumen taking you right up into the Hunter Valley. After three days of riding, we just about finished our loop back to Jerry's Plains, a little hamlet called uh, 
Laguna, which is not far from Wollamai, and you can spear off back to Newcastle pretty quite easily. Beautiful little spot. Now, three days on learner-approved adventure bikes. I really can't believe how good these bikes are. I think a lot of people discount them because of their capacity. But a 500 and a 700, or well, under 700 really, but and, uh, and a 650. Quite frankly, they're unbelievable value for money. Now, Phil, you've got the 650 Versus. Yes. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, it's a great, fun little good value bike. Uh, I like it because it's something you can spend all day on. Um, it's very smooth. The handling is way above its class. Um, it's not a lambs bike, but it's very similar to the lambs bike. It's a good solution for a lot of um, bike questions, I think. You can spend all day on it, several days in a row, keep up with everybody. It's great fun in the corners, and it's just easy to ride. Now, you've got a number of big capacity bikes, yeah. sports bikes and you know, adventure tourers. Yeah, yeah. So why, why is this versus, why is it in your stable? It makes a nice contrast to the others because it's an involving ride at legal-ish speeds. It's something that you can go out and you have a lot of fun on and it develops your technique a little bit because it's not, you've got to work a little bit more for it and it's just engaging. I just enjoy doing that. Okay. Now, Ryan, you spent most of the time on the CB500X, yep. the, the baby of the group. Uh, I rode it as well. I thought it was a fantastic thing. Yeah, what calling, did you think of it? Calling it a baby is selling it short, really. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's led um, quite easily. It's never held anyone up. Um, you know, it's, it's been really great. Good riding position will suit plenty of people. Uh, good wind protection as well. I thought it was probably the best in that regard. Um, yeah, great bike. And Pico, you spent most of your time on the MTO7 Tracer. I did. Uh, look, what a motorbike. Uh, probably the best engine here. Uh, definitely the most torque. Easy to ride. Uh, it's got budget suspension. You know, you've got to wear that to a degree. But it's only when the road becomes really, really rough that you, you notice that sort of stuff. The, uh, the riding position's great. It's got pretty good wind protection. Lamb's motorcycles, most people discount these sorts of bikes when they go into the into a motorcycle shop. And I'm telling you, they shouldn't because, uh, quite frankly, I'm gobsmacked at how good these three bikes have been at doing the job that we've, we've done. Now, it, once upon a time, I would never even consider a bike like that. It'd be, right, unless it, if it hasn't got a 1,000cc plus adventure tour, don't yeah, bother, don't you know? know I don't want to know about it. But yeah. seriously, I've got big capacity motorbikes mm. and I'd happily own any one of those. I think our point to point speed was no different to what it would have been on big bikes. Exactly. I yeah. mean we're on narrow, what B, mm. mostly B and C roads mm -hmm. and I wouldn't have wanted to go any quicker than that, no, really, I'm, what I was doing. The only thing you're probably giving up is a little bit of power coming out of corners, but other than that the ability to hold speed and get up hills and tip into corners and brake is all, all, all that you'd need. And you get the light agility of a small bike, yeah. so it makes it good fun. Now we sampled them on the dirt as well. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't have the, the tyres, uh, they're more road-based tyres, but really, the bikes, they've got longer travel suspension than mm. normal mm. road bikes as such, so I thought they handled not too bad. For transporting across dirt roads, they all tick the box completely. Now the CB500X, yes. great motorcycle. Great motorcycle. And uh, it even crashes well. Like, now I've got to say, in all my uh, uh, extensive history as a motorcycle <laughs> journalist, journalist, I guess, I don't have much of a history of crashing don't motorcycles. You? Oh, that's not what I've heard. <laughs> oh, well, well, I didn't crash on this trip yeah, anyway. Well, that's it. So, uh, <laughs> why? Why? Well, it's not an adventure unless, you know, something happens. So I just thought we'll keep us on your toes. <laughs> Threw himself under the bus for us. Oh, what a guy. I'll tell you what. <laughs> That's my generosity for right, you two. Running the ball. That's it. Good on you. <laughs> so on the Lamb Bike Adventure Bike Tour, I was coming along as the videographer slash photographer. Wasn't supposed to be in it. However, this bike went down. Ryan had a little crash on it. Not a bit, not a serious one. As you can see, there's only very minor damage. But he was feeling a little bit shaken up on the dirt and he's got almost zero dirt. Uh, off-road experience. So I jumped on it and rode it out and this was amazing. It's a lovely little bike and when I say little it just feels really small, really light, really easy to throw around. 
And I reckon if we drop the tyre pressures uh, uh, about 25%, 30%, Ryan might not have had so much trouble because he's a bit skatey at the front with a, with a hard front tyre. But I rode it into, into Laguna here and uh, rode it for a few of the photos and videos and uh, was really, really impressed. Very light, very easy to throw around, really willing little motor and a lot, a lot of fun. So the CB500X certainly gets my stamp of approval. So mate, it was on the gravel. Uh, on the gravel. What happened? I mean, I know the tyres aren't exactly uh, off-road tyres, but what was the story? Oh, mainly inexperience, I think. Um, going a bit too hard. Um, you know, one thing leads to another, and then before you know it, you sort of don't go there, don't go there, and of course that's what you know. That's where you end up going. Yeah, well that road, lots of loose, loose um, gravel too, which is if you get stuck into that. With those sorts of tyres, it's a recipe for a bit of a disaster. Yeah, and I noticed it's starting to get a little bit looser too, and, and then, I know, yeah, and I thought, you know, I'll slow down a little bit, and then, you know, probably a bit of fatigue as well, I'd say. Yeah, And then, yeah. you know, you're sort of not 100% switched on, and, you know, you're on your backside. Mm. Yeah, well, it's not as if I haven't done the same myself. <laughs> Plus, it was a right-hander, so the camber yeah. was wrong. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, but next time, mate. That's it. Hopefully. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah, that's right.